You just Google the unkillable soldier. Is this a real human? Real human. Lieutenant General Sir Adrian Paul Ghislaine Carton de Watt was a British Army soldier, officer, born of Belgian and Irish parents. He was awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest military decoration awarded for valour in the face of the enemy in various Commonwealth countries. He served in the Boer War, First World War and Second World War. He was shot in the face, head, stomach, ankle, leg, hip and ear, was blinded in his left eye, survived two plane crashes, tunneled out of a prisoner of war camp and tore off his own fingers when a doctor declined to amputate them, describing his experiences in the First World War he wrote, frankly, I'd enjoyed the war. <laughs> there's dudes like that out there. You just have to know there's guys like that out there. At 19, he decides that he wants to go and see war. Sneaks away without telling his father and literally offers himself to either the Boers or the British. The British take him. So Holy shit. He was like, I just want to be in war. His, Holy shit. His father doesn't know. So he's away in war. He gets shot in the leg and the groin, gets shipped back home. He says, I want to be redeployed. Gets redeployed again to South Africa. He was at the head of the Camel Corps, which was literally a group of people who rode into battle on camelback. So he gets shot. He gets shot in the ear and then in the eye. And then a bullet ricochets and hits him in the same eye again. While he's leading these guys into battle. He gets sent back home. The uh, British military say... He wants to go out on the First World War. He wants to go to the front lines of the First World War now. But they said, we can't send a guy with one eye out there because it's going to look like we've got really weak soldiers. So they give him a glass eye and say, the only way that you can go back out is if you wear this glass eye. And he says, oh, okay. In the taxi, leaving the hospital, takes it out, throws it out of a window and starts wearing an eye patch. The first battle that he's in when he rejoins, when he rejoins the army in World War I, a piece of shrapnel explodes his hand and all that's left are two fingers hanging on by the skin of the palm of his hand and his watch actually embeds itself in his arm too. So that, this is the first thing that he's encountered again. Goes to the field hospital. The doctor declines to amputate the fingers. So he just rips them off in front of him because he's in so much pain. The arm then has to be amputated. So he says to the guys again, I want to be redeployed. They're like, you are now a one-eyed amputee. I want to be deployed. Battle of the Somme, his next battle that he goes into. There's reports from other soldiers seeing Carton de Watt running into battle, pulling the pins out of grenades with his teeth, throwing them at the enemy and reloading a revolver with one hand. So this guy is a single armed killer. During that, he gets shot in the... He gets shot through the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> through the head. Doesn't die. In subsequent battles, oh, he, uh, he got promoted for 24 hours before he threatened to punch his superior and then got demoted again. So he's just like this totally wild dude. Anyway, he goes through this series of different difficult military exposés. He takes over three squadrons who don't have a commanding officer. None of them have any communication. So he, this one-armed, one-eyed guy, decides to run back and forth between the three different companies communicating his own orders. Rather than using a messenger, he just does it himself. That was what he got the Victoria Cross for, which is our equivalent of the Medal of Honor. During this time, he shot a, a bunch more. You think, right, okay, this guy's just led the most insane campaign through the Boer War and the First World War. Time for him to retire. Wrong. 60 years old, in 1940, he gets conscripted and drawn back up to help run secret missions. So his first mission... One of his first missions, he gets shot down in a fjord going toward Romania. There's a German plane that shot his plane down, circling overhead. Rather than get into the dinghy, because it would be an easy target, this one-armed, one-eyed guy and all the rest of the crew just bob under the water until this German fighter plane runs out of ammunition. That goes away. He finally gets picked up. Second time he goes up in a plane, <laughs> this plane crash lands and he swims to shore carrying a uh, injured comrade who survives, one arm, but swims carrying this other dude, gets captured by the Italians. He's then part of five escape attempts and digs a 60-meter tunnel with one arm and a bunch of other dudes. Then he spends a full week hiding out in northern Italy, despite the fact that he's 62 years old, one-armed, one-eyed, can't speak Italian and has covered in scars. Then he finally, finally gets picked up and released. They said that the only thing that the Italians had left to do was to use him to enable an armistice. They wanted to no longer be a part of the war. 
they use Carton du Wart to be an, on, uh, an envoy between the two uh, nations. And they said, well, you've been a prisoner of war for nine months. You don't look or smell the way that you should do. Why don't we give you a nice Italian tailor? And he rejected their offer to give him an Italian suit and said he would only wear one if they got it from Savile Row because, quote, he didn't want to look like a gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's a human badger. 